Welcome back, TCS TV viewers. Chris Nichols here again with Jordan Drake on camera. And today we're looking at the brand new Panasonic FZ1000. Yes, we've got it nice and early, and it is a full production copy. Now, is the FZ1000 a bridge camera, or is it closer to an SLR in quality? We're going to try that out today. We've also come out to the wetlands because, like its closest competitor, the RX10, it's got a big sensor. But unlike its closest competitor, it's also got a really long lens, 25 to 400. I'm you're going to try that out. We're going to see if we can find some birds, find some wildlife, some distant landscapes, and see what we can do with this brand new camera. Now my first impression of the camera when I hold it, you know, it's kind of like a bridge camera, like the RX10 or the FZ200, but it feels like an SLR. It's quite a bulky, chunky grip, very, very big in the handle. It's comfortable though. The lens, of course, very, very bulbous. This camera feels like an SLR. It's quite large. Very, very nice dials to change. Very, very chunky. Everything feels very easy to use. When it comes to continuous shooting, 12 frames per second in a camera like this at this price point, that's fantastic. It can handle a lot of action in sports. But autofocus is the great, amazing feature on this camera here. We've already seen with the GH4, its bigger brother, how amazing the autofocus can really be. This camera has the same DFD system and a very, very similar layout. I'm gonna say this right off the bat before I even get started, the point-to-point -point focusing, very, very impressive. Very much like a GH4. We're gonna get it set up and see if it can compete when it comes to continuous. Now the autofocus, continuous manual focus selector switch, very, very familiar with any sort of Panasonic camera. It's uh, very easy to use, very quick to change. You got a quick button here, and I like this now. You've got the traditional stuff, face detection, tracking, 49 point area, but this new free mode's awesome. Now the GH4 let us set up custom arrays for the focusing points, long lines vertically or horizontally. This goes beyond that. Check this out. I can go in here and I can literally pick whichever sensors I want to activate. I can draw a picture, I could do whatever I want. This is pretty amazing. We've got a lot of cool stuff and it really lets me customize what kind of array I want. Once I'm ready, I can select it. You can see my, uh, my update right there and it will now feel free to focus anywhere within those points that I've selected. It's a very neat, very customizable setup. So the zoom, of course, on this lens is going to be electronic system. you got a quick button for zoom and focus when you want to manually focus. I like when they put the reminder on the barrel for the focal lengths of the lens. But one complaint I have, it's noisy. I can hear it. If I was doing video and trying to do a, a push in or push out, it's going to make a lot of noise, unfortunately. Still, it's quick. It's a variable speed rocker. Otherwise, very accurate. Hey, so we found some birds, we did some shooting here, and again, when it comes to autofocus, I guess I'm gonna say this, this is my impression. The point-to-point -point and single is incredible, it's beautiful. It reminds me of a GH4, I have no complaints whatsoever. When it came to continuous though, it's pretty good, but sometimes it does this funny wobble when it can't figure it out. It is not gonna be GH4. Let me repeat that again. It is not gonna be GH4. Still, it's very effective. We did get a few usable shots, and it's gonna blow the pants off of any bridge camera in the market. Again, you gotta remember that at this price point, the EFSA 1000 represents excellent value for the money. All right, so I'm playing with the macro here. Very much like a point and shoot camera, I click into a macro mode. You know, that kind of reminds me of its bridge camera roots here. Click into a macro mode, and right now I'm doing it at the telephoto 400 mil. Stabilizer's great, by the way. And it's about a one meter focusing close distance. Now, if I'm gonna go to 25 millimeters on my wide angle, I'm gonna be able to get right in here, 0 0.03 meters. We can see very, very nice. Again, very much like a point and shoot, we get our closest at our wide angle range. But that stabilizer is effective, and it does give us decent macro with a fixed lens like this. I'm stopped here because amazingly, I found color in Alberta. I really want to isolate this, so I'm going to go to f4. I am at the 400 millimeter range. We're getting a nice close focus on this flower. Nice thin depth of field, thanks to that somewhat larger chip. 
And again, the stabilizer helps out a lot. There's another thing I wanna talk about while it's you know fresh in my mind. This back dial, a lot of these cameras that I've been using lately from other brands, I have hated the dial. If you're watching the channel, you know a lot of these things I hate. This thing's great, it's big, it's chunky, it's easy to turn. This is what I've been looking for. And it's got that center push button. Push it to choose over another control, but it's not something you're gonna do accidentally. So finally, they've made a really nice back dial. Now, of course, an important thing with mirrorless cameras nowadays is, are we gonna get good viewfinders and good screens? The FZ1000 is not gonna disappoint. The back screen is 921K. It's very, very good, especially in bright conditions. I get a nice, clear view. Even with these reflections, it handles it very, very well. I also like the EVF. We're getting a 2.36 million dot EVF. No lag whatsoever. This thing is nice and quick, sharp, very, very good. So good to see now the modern crop of cameras are providing very usable EVFs. We've got a really nice one inch sensor, 20 megapixels of resolution. Of course, very similar to a Sony RX10 or RX100 series of camera. Are they using the exact same sensor in there? I don't know, I'm skeptical that Panasonic and Sony would do that, but certainly what I'm seeing on the camera, you know, it's giving me image quality that's very, very comparable. Check out our high ISO ramp up here, going from 1600 up to 12,800. As we scale up through these ISOs, you're gonna notice that the FZ1000 does a brilliant, brilliant job in low light situations considering its sensor size. But how does it do against the RX10, its closest competitor? Check these shots out at 3200 ISO and 6400 ISO. Looking carefully, this is what I'm noticing. The Panasonic seems to hold on to a little bit more detail. The Sony though does tend to have a little bit less noise. The Panasonic tends to get a bit more of this chromatic noise, some funky colors going on. Is it different sensors or is it something new with the processing? Hard to say, but either way, you're getting very similar results. Not any better, not any worse. So I'm getting some 4K footage here. We got some beautiful color. We got some raindrops on the water here. And of course, one of the big sales features for the FZ1000 is gonna be the 4K video. That's what everybody's talking about. 4K under $1,000. We're gonna take a look and see if the image quality is any good. But of course, the fact that it's raining and an important fact here that this is not weather sealed means we better find shelter. Now, when it comes to movie codecs on this camera, of course, the big thing, 4K footage, it's an MP4, but only 30 frames per second. Still, you're getting 100 megabytes per second. That is the same data rate as the GH4. Now, we've also got AVC HD. That's gonna unlock a lot of nice 1080 modes. We're gonna have 60 frames per second, and we're gonna be able to do high speed as well. We've got some other nice features here in the camera that make this a good cinematic tool. First off, what we really like in photo style is the Cine Like D and Vivid Profiles. These give us flatter profiles, but we get good color and saturation, especially with Vivid if we wanna push it, and we don't have to do too much grading. But if we need to make exposure changes, we have that freedom. You've also got some other nice features, of course, zebra, peaking, uh, punch and zoom, but we've also got luminance levels. The camera's really made to be a good cinematic device. Now we do really like the FZ1000 as a cinematic package, but there's four things that we felt could have been done better or that are missing. First off, we do have a mic input, we have good level controls, and it's a decent preamp, but there's no headphone jack, and that's really essential, and it's easy, and it's simple and cheap to do, especially on a body this bulky. Other things, the aperture, it's not stepless, so if we're doing video and we change our aperture, we get these big, chunky changes in exposure, not a nice, smooth transition. Also, on days like this where it's nice and bright outside, we want ND filters, and it's convenient to have it built in. You're not gonna find that here. You're gonna have to use a variable screw-in in the front of the lens. Also, in 4K, yeah, I know it's great that we have it at this price point, absolutely. But check this out. When you look at these two video clips, when we punch in on 4K, we actually also lose that wide-angle coverage. It crops in tighter, and that's too bad because we love having wide-angle in video. That being said, remember, at its price point, the FZ1000 is fantastic. Yeah, you know, if you look at its closest competitor, the RX10, it has the ND filters, it also has the stepless aperture, and it's got a headphone jack, but it doesn't have 4K. 
Now, when it comes to video quality, overall, we're pretty pleased, especially 4K. You're getting similar quality to an AX100. It's a very good data rate, great detail here. Now, when it comes to 1080, yeah, the AVC HD codec is showing its age. It can get a little bit mushy. We're not getting amazingly high data rates. And you got to remember that the competition is coming out with XAVC now. So that's a bit of a downside. Still, it does unlock some fun features. We get 60p slow-mo and we even do get 120 frame per second slow-mo. The quality is not amazing. It's not going to blow you away, but it is a lot of fun. Now, of course, we know the camera does great low light quality when it comes to stills, but how about the video side? We normally have our low light testing facility at the camera store, but it was in use at the moment, so we had to make do with this. Check it out. But it worked. Now, we shot in 4K, and to be honest with you, we were not very impressed with the low light performance. A lot of softness, a lot of mush, and look at that color. Ugh, really gross color noise. We thought maybe 1080p would fix it. Check it out. It's really not any better. We're still getting weird colors and a very soft rendition. So we weren't really impressed with that. We thought it would do better. All right, so time for final thoughts on the FZ1000. I love the image quality. If you're a photographer, you're gonna get great results off this sensor, especially with that big, big lens. 25 to 400 millimeters, we used it a ton. It's still fast, 2.8 to f4, even considering that large sensor size, I think it's a very good trade-off to have. You know, this camera overall, you gotta remember, good video quality, great image quality, it's very good value considering its price point. So you've got two really good choices here with very similar cameras, but again, the FZ1000 is just so much less money. The RX10 is a refined body. I frankly like the grip better. I like the smaller size better. It's a very slick camera. This is a bit chunky and a bit big, but you know what? I'm gonna put it this way here, folks. If you're a photographer, the choice is pretty obvious. For the money, this thing's giving you a way longer lens, it's faster focusing, and the image quality is the same. So it's a really, really good choice. If you want video, then the choice is a little bit tougher because this does have some features that videographers are really, really gonna like. And 4K, I mean, if you're a nut for it, well, you have to go this way. But if you want good 1080, the RX10 is still a fantastic choice. Still, if I was looking for a versatile camera that could do many different things well and was affordable, this is a really, really good camera. You should look out for this in the near future. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon as always.